You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Interia. So y'all, before we jump into it, I just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and future access to all upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all. It greatly helps support the channel. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. Let's go. And as you can see, Amicus is very, very naked. Anyway, relations with the cats is already strained as it is. I think you should just deport him. Oh, I would. You know that, but it's all the more complicated with Cassius in the mix. Amicus finally lowers me into the seat, into the side series as we float across the lake. So I thought he was doing social work on the poor, in the poorer towns and cities. We managed to sense our to sink uh, to sense our schedules in Lux, so he'll be accompanying Sink then. So he'll be accompanying us for just the for just the first part of our journey. He's still popular in Lux. The visual of him by my side could be rather advantageous. After that, we will part ways. So, how is Alex going to fit into all this? Doesn't the public know what he did? Cass says that emphasizing that Alex is his pet will play into the narrative that the saboteur was conquered. I thought you got rid of the pet system. Just another decree being held back by Cass's antics. It'll be, a, it'll be abolished as soon as that damn cat is out of the way. Perhaps I should just rid, perhaps I should just rid us of the problem and surprise Lux with a public execution. They still enjoy such spectacle in that region, you know. I think I'm starting to see why Nefru didn't tell Amicus about Alex. I tried to shift the conversation to a lighter tone, though. I don't think you'd execute him, even if you weren't changing the diplomatic style of Adastra. Oh, are you implying that I'm soft? Well, I just think that you rem the, that you remember when Alex was your friend and that stays your and stays your hand. Besides, I poke him in the stomach. You are soft. Hmm. He grunts and seems about to say something, but then awkwardly looks away at the palace. You all right? I am. Then he takes a breath like he always does before talking about something that's bothering him. Speaking of pets, remember that your role has changed and you should consider yourself to be an equal amongst the siblings. Okay. I narrow my eyes. Not sure exactly where this is going. Optics are a very large part of politics, and perhaps you should consider carrying yourself in a more formal way compared to when we are in private. I mull it over for a moment. I feel my face get a little hot as I realize that Amicus is telling me not to embarrass him with PDA. I instinctively want to become defensive, to tell Amicus that this is just another one of his issues, but... Nope, this is really an important part of politics. It's an important part of life, actually. I can't just haphazardly plant kisses and rub Amicus's body in public like that. I mean, I think I already know. I think I already would have known this, but it's an odd thing to hear Amicus say it. I clear my throat, hoping I don't look as red as I feel. Oh, yeah, of course. I remember my formal stance. I clasp my hands in front of me. When we arrive at our Imperial Villas, it will be different. You can do whatever you'd like to be then. Yeah, definitely. My failure to banter back like usual isn't lost on Amicus, and the silence becomes awkward. Something that doesn't happen very often these days. I'm not sure why I feel so deflated. I suppose it could be because I didn't really process the fact process the fact until now that this could be a glimpse into my future life with Amicus. Lots of formalities. I'd accepted this fact months ago, along with the fact that it's very likely that I won't ever feel at home. Both on Adastra and on Earth. I'm sorry if I said something foolish again. It's just that with politics, you must think of both... No, no, you're fine. It's a time and a place sort of thing. It's just... Well, I hope I'm able to do things right and that I don't screw up and embarrass you somehow. Killian, if you manage to embarrass me half as much as I embarrass myself, I will be genuinely impressed. I think Amicus is underestimating my abilities. Well, I'd like to not embarrass you at all. You already have enough to worry about without me causing problems with stuff like optics. I honestly should probably stay in the villa until you finish all the important stuff. I'm genuinely trying to offer a realistic solution, but I can't help but feel that that's, that it's coming off as bitter. Amicus clearly thinks the same. Listen, we didn't go to hell and back only for you to then be hidden away like a bad secret. You are important, and not only to me, but all of Adastra. But to all of Adastra, public gaps are not enough to change that. We finally reach the shore at that moment, and Amicus helps me out of the, cra out of the craft. Alright, but you know, in Adastra history, they talked about a few emperors that couldn't even adjust to the formalities of the position, abdicated, or even, uh descended into insanity and became mad kings. Are you doing all right? Second y'all, it is water time. Hmm. Okay. Please, Killian. My mind is not so weak that I cannot handle the duties expected of me since birth. And are you referring to Emperor Lucius, the one that married and divorced every week because he was too impotent to bear children? Amicus laughs loudly and I just stare at him. 
Okay, first of all, it has nothing to do with weakness, and if you do feel like you're crumbling under the pressure, tell me. Promise me that. My tone brings Amicus's bravado crashing down like I hoped it would. Yes, of course. Just trying to add a touch of levity. Secondly, yes, I was talking about Lucius, and yes, he was real self-conscious about his dick not working to the point that he revived execution by immolation to punish anyone he thought might have mentioned it. Ah, yes, I believe anything phallic was enough to send him into a rage. It's a very ad astern story. Though I do not remember, remember mentions of deaths by burning. Perhaps you're confusing his error with an earlier one. I opened my mouth to deny that I am, but then I remember that I'd heard that particular piece of information in the Kimian rebuttal. But maybe, either way, my earlier statement stands. Of course, I feel that maybe this also applies to you and that you are feeling a bit under pressure at the moment. I sigh. A little. I am representing all of humanity, after all. Amicus puts his arm around me as we walk toward the palace. Trust me, this will all become easier once you've experienced your first day. It will just become a bit boring after that. I prefer boring these days. Me too. I can, tell that we're I can tell that we're running pretty late, even as Amicus takes his time getting ready, including fitting into another shower that he fitting into an, fitting in another shower that he pulls me into. He assures me that because of the semi-formal nature of the trip, the schedule isn't all that strict. Of course, that doesn't really matter when others are waiting. Others like Virginia. She stares at us as we walk up to her. The automatic carriage sits behind her, Nefru casually slouching in the front, busying himself with his tablet. As we come to a stop in front of her, Amicus keeps his arm around me, still in good spirits. Virginia seems to work her jaw for a moment before speaking. You are impressively late this time, Amicus. Almost an hour, in fact. Sorry, Virginia, but unforeseen circumstances dictated that I should take a dip in the lake. I then determined that being late was worth washing and grooming myself so that I may be presentable. Just get in the carriage, Amicus. Of course, dearest sister. How have you been lately? I've not had a moment to catch up today. I would have kicked Amicus if we'd been seated at a table. Virginia just eyes her brother up and down before turning away and climbing into the carriage herself. Today, I've been reminded that most things are not worth it, brother. Fantastic! Amicus hops into the carriage and offers a paw to me, pulling me up while at the same time the carriage begins to move. Are his tactics to antagonize you beginning to succeed, Virginia? That's not like you at all. It depends on the day, Nefru, though I must admit those, partic those particular days are becoming more frequent. I glance up at Amicus, but he just continues smiling running his blunt claws through my hair. While I understand and usually side with Virginia when it comes to Amicus' behavior and lack of punctuality, I do sometimes like it when he's able to counter her dour mood with an overly positive one. We ride in silence for a while, content to just take in the scenery. About halfway there, Nefru turns around. But, uh, did you tell Amicus what we discovered on the island, Killian? Amicus lets out a slow breath, his content mood dissipating with it. I'll take that as a yes. Why didn't you tell him? Because he explodes on the topic of Alex. Have you decided what to do? No. Well, you do have an advisor. Kill him. I'm sorry. Kill him. The cat has done more than enough to deserve it. Not a public execution, mind you, but rather an accident. I go over what Virginia just said in my mind, not really sure if I'm understanding correctly. This would at least deprive Amorpha of one excuse for war. And if you truly feel you have no options in terms of deportation or imprisonment, I honestly recommend this route. It's asinine that we are allowing a dangerous spy to be so close to the Imperial family. It is dangerous for all of Ed Astra. I shift uncomfortably. While I knew Amicus hadn't been serious before, Virginia seems to be deadly serious right now. Meanwhile, Amicus doesn't react much at all, continuing to stare at the back of the bench in front of us while he goes on stroking my hair. Second, y'all, it is water time. And we're back, y'all. Okay. The way you speak of death so callously for someone we know is quite unsettling. Nefru, while I thank you for alerting me to the issue, I am not in the mood for a lecture on the superiority of Kimian morality today. The bigger problem with that cat is that he is going to go back to Amorpha eventually with all the knowledge he obtained here on Adastra. Have you not heard rumors of what the cats are planning? They claim the parents to be malicious. Even Adastra never outright said, sh said such things. If I'd ever taken time to think about it, I definitely would have assumed that Virginia would have wanted Alexius executed. Her idea echoes of something in the past that I want to bring up, but I can't. It's a strange feeling, like I'm choosing to stay silent because it's not my place, but also that if I tried to speak, I might not be able to. I also feel like we're being watched. This isn't a new feeling. It's something that I've been experiencing for the past several months. In fact, it started at the university we're heading toward right now, and I try to force the image of a contorted statue to the back of my mind. I lean harder against Amicus. They are in the political turmoil for the first time in a millennia. 
In my opinion, it is simply a necessary reckoning with their identity and values. They will return to the fold as a stronger people, and we will welcome them back. Which would be a mistake on the part of the parents. Let's talk about the parents. When they know what the cats are capable of. Reminds me that I'm under their control in so many ways, and right now I can feel it more than ever. I open my mouth, feeling the mechanical structure in my throat strain and protest, jammed as if it had stopped working. They have my voice, and I know they're using that against me right now. I grip on Amicus's thigh, thigh and, and, hear him, and I hear him grunt. Then shift to look at me. Killian, are you alright? Ugh, that's me. He says it in a low voice so I won't interrupt Virginia and Neferu. I won't, I won't, I won't, I, I won't be silent. I won't. Amicus jumps as my voice makes an odd glitchy droning sound before seeming to kick back into working order. What was that? Are you alright? Yeah, sorry, something's wrong with the throat machine the parents stuck in me. It, wor it works now, it's working now though. Look at Virginia. I just wanted to say that I'm completely against killing Alex, and I would rather you not talk about it in my presence. I notice then that I'm heaving for breath. I planned to say it in a calm, fir firm sort of way, but something was trying to stop me, and this left me even more unsettled in the assassination talk. A strange feeling hangs in the air, and not just the one caused by my awkward, glitched-out outburst. Rather, something feels different, like I've broken away from something, like I've steered my way off a road I've been stuck on. It's like this wasn't meant to happen. It's like I'm free. Amicus, is your friend psychologically sound? Of course he is. Amicus takes a closer look at me. You are alright, right? You said your throat modification is having issues. I rub my throat, finally catching my breath, quickly nodding. Yeah, yeah, sorry everyone. Something just got stuck and I really wanted to say it, so it just kind of exploded out. You really want to defend the cat? Hey, enough of this. He just said he did not want to be involved in this. I just think we should consider who else plotted an assassination and made it look like an accident. It's a different situation, yeah, but I think we're a bit be we're a bit better than him and can figure out a more peaceful way to resolve this. Virginia keeps her eyes narrow, doesn't say anything. I, for one, agree. I would also consider visiting the university archives to see if the parents will check your device. That sound was truly otherworldly. Yeah. Amicus just stares at me with concern for the rest of the ride as we fall into a very uncomfortable silence. I don't mind, though. I wrapped up and tried to figure out what the hell just happened. And what, exa and what exactly I should do next. Things stay awkward for the rest of the ride to the university. We finally step inside. Cassius and Alex are already there, sitting in the main hall. Well, Cassius is laying down on a bench while Alex is standing next to a large creature. One that I've never seen before. Second y'all. He's big, but so are most of the aliens I've seen. I know he's most likely our guide. The bear that Amicus mentioned earlier. If anything, his fashion gives him away as not being from Adastra. I don't know much about them or their culture. There's little mention of them in Adastra history. Probably because they never warred with the wolves. Makes me wonder if they have a lot in common. Alex is talking to him, and I can barely tell that the conversation is awkward before I can even hear what's being said. I can already tell. Okay. Think of it this way. I am standing on a bed of nails surrounded by flames. I am already in a painful position while being told I have the choice to leave it. Into a worse position. Is that really choice? Is that really choice, or simply the manipulator using a poor situation as a cover to claim that it gave you a choice? Oh, hello, bear. Hmm. <laughs> But that isn't the actual choice, now is it? The bear seems to notice our presence as we draw closer. Ah, your Imperial Majesty, it is an honor to meet you. Ah, oh. The bear bows low to the ground. Greetings. I presume to be your I presume you to be our guide. I was told your name earlier, but I seem to have forgotten in days of the in the day's chaos. Not a problem. I am Bjarni, and I will indeed be your tour guide. Speaking of chaos. During the exchange, Alex had been casually sliding away toward Cassius, who had still been lying on the bed. Your little chaos lover seems to be up to his old ways. If you ever abandoned them in the first place, that is. Tried to turn me against the parents just before the trip. Huh. Alexius freezes as he try as he realizes that he's being addressed. Shocking. Excuse me, but I'm simply presenting you to you a thought experiment to better illustrate an idea. Hell of a topic for our first conversation, I think. Alexius wisely chooses not to respond, instead walking away back toward Cassius. It's quiet for a moment, then Bjarni's demeanor suddenly becomes dark. I know you are already aware of this, but keep an eye on that cat. He's pure deception. Oh, uh, I plan to. Anyway, is this Killian? Pleasure to meet you as well. Bjarni extends a paw in, my, in a way that's so, so familiar, I instinctively raise my hand. He then takes it and slowly but deliberately shakes it. If it weren't for him being overly careful with his movements, I wouldn't have even realized that this is a handshake and how strange it is that Bjarni seems to know about it. 
Amicus frowns at our exchange, unsure what to make of it. Seems I need to work on that, judging by your reaction. Eh? It was a handshake? Definitely need to work on it, but yes, the dominant form of physical greeting in Europe and a majority of Earth, from what I understand. Thought you might know that, Amicus. Oh, well, I do know quite a bit about Earth, Europe, and Italy, though Though I must admit, I've never been greeted in that way. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye